Continuing right along with the month of restitution. Today, we are doing Watching the Wheels, John Lennon, the original piano version, but adapted for guitar. This is going to be a little different, a little the same as Chris Cornell's version, and this video is for Mr. Kevin Lohr, who was so hell-bent on doing this that he thought it prudent to send some lettuce Terrence's way. Thank you very much, Kevin. And here we go. But first, this song was more than a little. I had to write it down to make sense of it, so I might as well share it with you. If you would like to follow along with this very piece of paper, you can find it at my website, ryanlent.com. Show notes and the title, of course, is in super secret backwards code, so no ne'er-do-wells can be on the same page. The opposite of watching the wheels is, of course, smelling the bobsled. I might normally be more inclined to do this on an acoustic guitar, but I just got this guitar and I'm a little excited. This is an 07 Made in Mexico Strat from an estate auction. Dead guys have the best deals. Play a C chord, then you're going to play that A string 3rd fret all by itself, followed by D1 and D2. Those are our three notes. You do them twice. Then we're going to play baby F followed by A minor 7 with an E in the bass. All that means is lose your ring finger and middle finger sneaks up to that D string 2nd fret. That's an E note in the bass, so just strum from that string down. And then you want it to be C, it's not C. We do hear, but we also hear, which makes it F with a C in the bass. So pointer finger on B1, middle finger on G2, pinky finger on D3, and ring finger on A3. So... Baby F, A minor 7 with an E in the bass, F with a C in the bass. For the intro. Now that you know the intro, the verse is a piece of cake because you do an intro, just like normal. Followed by C, the three notes three times. those two things until you run out of verse and if you want to do the walk up you know excitement notes you can strum your C once more and then we want A5 D3 A7 D5 in context into the pre-chorus but before we get to the pre-chorus I just realized that another different and perfectly great way to handle this walk down thing little F a minor 7 with an E in the bass followed by F with a C in the bass would be simply just to start with F with a C in the bass, play C, and go back to F with a C in the bass. It doesn't matter. You choose. Versus. That one's probably a little bit easier to strum. Pick your poison. When I say that I'm okay, the pre-chorus is going to be F, D minor, G, D minor, G followed by F, D minor, and then hang on G forever, and I put it in parentheses, you can do it if you want, always a good time, G7. The exciting notes leading into the chorus, if you want to do them, are going to be open D, D2, and G open. Then, F, G, C, A minor. The reason I cut there is because in this set of four chords we are going to play D minor followed by D minor 7 with a C in the bass. And if you want to do this for real for real, take your D minor chord, lose your ring finger and put your pinky finger on B3 instead. Now your ring finger is available to play that C note on the A string 3rd fret that makes this chord D minor 7 with a C in the bass. If you don't want to go through all that trouble, just play your D minor like regular and then just play it's technically a C add 9 if we do the a string 3rd fret and leave the B string 3rd fret, but in the context of we just played a D minor and the rest of the band is playing D minor 7 with a C in the bass, this comes off awfully like a D minor 7 with a C in the bass, so you pick your favorite there, but these four chords are F, E minor, D minor, D minor 7 with a C in the bass, followed by G, G7, A minor, a minor 7 with a G in the bass, not so scary, just take your ring finger and put it on the E string 3rd fret, followed by the better man chord, D 
with an F sharp in the bass, that's E2, G2, B3, before he says, I just have to let it go, it's F. I believe it's actually G sharp, so take your big F and move it up to frets four, five, and six, but I prefer F minor. You still get the G sharp note that you need there, that's the way Chris Cornell did it. I always like a major to minor switch, so I'm picking F minor, but you play G sharp if you want there, and of course back into the C. I'll do the whole chorus now. again, but the second time through, when you get to that F, F minor, or F, G sharp, as it truly is, you're going to do it. Land on C, and then let's play the G string, 4, 3, 2, and land on the better man chord, D with an F sharp in the bass, do it again. Then we do our F, our F minor, or G sharp, and it's the end of the song. Play a C. You can add the pinky finger to the G string third fret because the piano riffage includes that dominant seven, and you can allude to it there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for smelling the bobsled. Thank you so much again, Kevin, for the lettuce. On behalf of Terrence, everybody else, I hope that was fun and helpful. Thank you for being here, and I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye. <laughs>